Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Give me a moment here to get situated. You guys all look great, though. Everyone's dressed up for Thanksgiving. Not everyone. I wore my plaid. I figured it was, it was fall time. Oh, okay. I think I'm, I think I'm set. Yeah, good morning. Um, as Tim said, I feel like I'm going to kick this over. Sorry, Josh, you'll have to move it. I tend to walk a little bit whenever I preach. Yeah, as Tim said, my name's Kevin. I get to be an assistant pastor here at Elmer Full Gospel. And if we haven't met yet, I would love to do that. So come tackle me after the service. I'd love to get to know you. Um, yeah, and if you're wondering where our incredible lead pastors are, pastors Nathan and Natalia, they are visiting family this weekend, so we bless them um, just to have an amazing time with family there. We miss them, of course, but, and actually, uh, I got a message from Pastor Natalia this morning, just if we could pray for Ileana, because she has a surgery on Wednesday. So why don't you just join your hearts with me? We'll just pray right now. Um, God, we thank you for our lead pastors. We thank you for their leadership in this church, their vision for where we're going, um, and their heart. And we, we first of all just pray that you would bless their family time away, that it would be restful and relaxing, and that they would be recharged and ready to go for next week. But we also pray, God, for Ileana this Wednesday um, as she has surgery. God, we just pray that your blessing would be on that surgery on the surgeon, all of the medical staff associated with that, God, that it would go incredibly well. She would recover amazingly. There would be no, you know, complications or side effects, and that it would just be really, um, your hand would be evident in that time, God. And God, we, we also just thank you for this morning. We thank you for the people that are here. We thank you for this opportunity to be thankful and to learn a little bit more about who you are and what you've called us to. And God, I pray that you would anoint the words that I speak, that it wouldn't really be about the words that I say, but it would be about your grace on them, and that we would be transformed this morning. Amen. Amen. Quick question. Who here has already eaten Thanksgiving? I have. We had it yesterday. How many people today? Today? Okay. Yep. A few more people tomorrow. Okay. I feel like most people are having it tomorrow. Well, happy Thanksgiving. You guys will like still be recovering from your Thanksgiving food coma on Tuesday, so good luck with that, going back to work and school and whatever else you're doing. All right. I get to talk about thankfulness today, which is exciting. So if you, uh, if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to turn with me. We're going to jump into Colossians chapter 3, and we're going to look at a couple of uh, different places in here, but we're going to start with the first couple of verses. And so let me just give you a little bit of context. This is a letter that the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Colossae, and it's, it's kind of an interesting letter because often whenever Paul writes a letter, he has a whole bunch of things that he's trying to correct in that church. So he will say, hey, you know, you got to do this different or you got to watch out for this. And he has a little bit of that in the book of Colossians. But it's really, it's a pretty encouraging letter, which tells me that the church was probably doing pretty well. And there's a couple of warnings in there, but it's mostly quite encouraging. And at the end of chapter two, Paul is reminding the church, hey, don't get caught up focused on what you're allowed to eat or not allowed to eat or specific religious festivals, which is really common for the Jewish Christians to kind of get focused on all of this other stuff that doesn't matter as much. And then we go into Colossians 3, again, verse 1 and 2. And I'm reading out of the NIV translation this morning. Uh, I usually like the ESV, but I just like the way the NIV conveys a couple of these thoughts. So, it says, since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. So the title of my message this morning is Focus Up, The Power of Gratitude. 
Turn to your neighbor and say, focus up. Focus up. Turn to your other neighbor and say, this is going to be really good. This is going to be really good, really good this morning. So I love these two verses because they have this, this kind of twin reminder for us. We have to set our hearts on things above, and we also have to set our minds on things above. And we're going to talk about how these two reminders actually have a lot to do with thankfulness. And different translations, like I said, they have different ways of conveying these verses. If you're following along, it probably says a little bit different if you have a different translation. But the original Greek words that are used in these verses are really, really forceful. This is a very intentional act. This isn't complacent or lackadaisical. It's very active. We are to be intentional about fixing our minds and our hearts on things above. And if you're trying to figure out how, like, this focus up concept that Paul talks about here is connected to Thanksgiving, we're going to jump down a few verses. So same chapter, but verses 15 to 17. So Colossians 3, 15 to 17. And Paul is going to give us a few practical tips on how to live out this concept of focus up. With our hearts and minds, we're focused up. So starting at verse 15, he says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So there's a lot in here, right? He, he talks about singing, he talks about teaching and stuff, but through it all, there's this consistent theme of gratitude, of thankfulness. This is the, the mindset and the heart posture that we're to have when we're doing all of these things. He says, be thankful. He says, sing to God with gratitude. He says, give thanks. And so this is a practical application of what he started off the chapter talking about. He says, focus up. But then he says, one of the ways that you can focus up is to be thankful. We need to intentionally turn our gaze from earth to heaven. Take our eyes off of the negative circumstances around us and turn it into thankfulness. And when we do, life can change. Things can transform around us. Our circumstances may or may not change, but our heart posture definitely will. If we spend our days focused on the negative circumstances, if we're focused down, it can be really easy to get frustrated and bitter and disillusioned and disappointed with what's going on. And if we get stuck in there, we can live there for a really long time. So we have to work at this this practice of focusing up, of being thankful. And there's a lot of things that can change when we're thankful. I've told a couple people as, as I was like preparing for this message this week, Thankfulness is a kind of a difficult topic. Not that it's like not fun. I really enjoy talking about thankfulness, but it's difficult because there's so much in the Bible that talks about thankfulness and the power of gratitude and why we should be thankful and all of these things that it's hard to pick and choose. Um, But I only have, you know, however many minutes left with you. So I'm going to just talk about two things that thankfulness can do in our lives. Two things that thankfulness does when we focus up We can have transformation and peace. So two things that happen when we focus up are transformation and peace. And then a little bit later on, I'm going to try to give you three ways that I hope will be very practical that we can grow in our ability to focus up, to be thankful, to be grateful. So what happens when we focus up? Why should we do this? Why should we be thankful? Why should we be grateful? The first one is transformation. And so we we started off and we looked at these first two verses of Colossians 3. And Paul says, you know, focus up with your hearts and minds. And then we kind of jumped down a bunch of verses. And we talked about, hey, this is, you know, being thankful. That is how we focus up. And I, I hope some of you were wondering, like, what is in between these two 
passages that Pastor Kevin just pulled out. And so I'm glad you asked. Because there, there's a few things that Paul talks about in between these two passages. But really, he f- spends quite a bit of it focused on the transformed life. Talking about living a godly life. What it looks like, what it doesn't look like. He, he lists off a bunch of things that are part of the sinful nature that he expects the church to move away from, to be cleansed from. And he, so he talks about, you know, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, anger, rage, malice, slander, lying, all of this stuff. And he says, this is not how you're supposed to live anymore. This is how you once lived, but this should not be part of your life anymore. And then he talks about the things that should be part of the transformed godly life. And so he talks about compassion and kindness and patience and humility and gentleness and love. And this whole passage is one kind of continuous stream of thought. So he starts off and he says, we need to focus up. And then he says, this is what it actually looks like when you do focus up. You live a godly transformed life where you're not caught up in all of this sin. You actually live transformed. And then it kind of closer to the end of the chapter, he says, and this is how you focus up. You're thankful. And, you know, he lists off a couple of other things, but really a lot of the focus is if you're thankful, your life will naturally start to look more like Jesus, more godly, more transformed, more filled with hope and peace and joy. And so, You know, we all at different times in our lives, we fight with some of these sins, right? One of the the ways that we can practically fight against it is by being thankful. So maybe you're, you know, you're in a season and you find yourself feeling like greedy for things. Spend some time thanking God for what he's already given you. Just be intentional about it. Oh God, I'm like fighting with this inner thing, but I'm going to choose to be thankful and fix my mind on things above. Or maybe you have a tendency to lie about things and and you're trying to kick it, but it just seems like this habit that's built into you. Spend some time thanking God that he's, he's the God of all truth and there's no need to hide behind lies when we are on his side. When we're connected to him, there's no need to, no need to hide behind any, you know, exaggerations or mistruths or half-truths or anything like that. Spend some time in gratitude. Thankfulness is a powerful way to live a godly, transformed life. And on the other hand, if we're not careful, if we don't have a grateful attitude, if we don't focus up, like I said, it can get really easy to get stuck in bitterness and frustration and all of these things. Has anyone ever met someone who's just like, if I can put it this way, like just a cranky person and it feels like nothing ever brightens their day. No one wants to raise their hands. They're like, that feels uncomfortable. But I think most of us can kind of connect with that, right? Like we we know someone who's like, oh man, it just feels like no matter what, they can find the negative side of any situation. And I, I think a big part of that is they just weren't thankful. They didn't choose to be thankful. You can choose it. It's great when you feel it, but you can also choose thankfulness. And so that's kind of the first thing that can happen when we choose to focus up is we live a transformed life and we start looking more like Jesus when we live in thankfulness. The second one is peace. Has anyone ever felt anxious or stressed out? I hope most people will like honestly raise their hands. Most people have uh, experienced that. And so one one of the main ways that we can combat this feeling of anxiety or stress is actually thankfulness. Uh, In Philippians 4, verse 6, Paul is writing to this this church in Philippi. And these are really familiar verses. If you've been around church, you have heard these, I'm sure, many times. But they're still powerful. So verse 6 of Philippians 4, Paul says, Do not be anxious about anything. Easier said than done, right? Don't be anxious about anything. Oh, thanks, Paul. Really appreciate that. But he goes on. In every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard 
your hearts and your minds. Interesting, hearts and minds again. Hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So if you want a peace that literally does not make sense, pray, but pray with gratitude. I think some people can get in the habit of praying with a spirit of complaining or bitterness or frustration. And we, you know, I, I really do believe that God is strong enough to carry all of our complaints. We can be honest with God. We can tell him that we're upset. All of those things. We need to be honest with them. But I think sometimes we pray and that's the only thing that happens is we just complain to God for a while. We need to get past that and get to the point where we can truly be grateful to God as well. And so this verse doesn't say, thank God for every circumstance. It doesn't. It says, thank God in every circumstance. And I was, I was talking to Roger this morning right before service, and he like stole this point. I was like, Roger, that is my point. He was like, yeah, we don't have to thank God for everything, but we thank God in everything. And that's exactly right. We can tell God we would like our circumstances to be different. That's allowed. But we can still be thankful even when they're not different. And so we don't stay there. We don't stay in complaining or bitterness. We get honest with God that we'd like things to be different, but then we choose to be grateful anyways. And for me, I can, I can remember the day that my parents communicated to my siblings and I that my mom had been diagnosed with multiple myeloma, which is a type of cancer that impacts plasma cells and is medically incurable. And so I can remember this moment really well, and I'm sure many of you have been in moments like these where it feels like, what, is this real? Is this actually happening to us, to our family, to my mom, who's this incredible person and like, you know, is so giving and so caring? And then you have all of the questions, right? Why is this happening? What's going to happen? How is this all going to play out? And it can be really easy to get frustrated, right? And, and it can be really easy to get bitter. You you've probably can point to people who they've had a really hard circumstance in their lives, and they've ended up bitter because of it. And I'm, I'm grateful, just to tell you the, you know, give you a bit of a disclaimer, my mom is doing great. But there was a season of time when we really didn't know what was going to happen. And I, I can remember kind of fighting through this and how do I feel about this? Like, you're just, you're just terrified. And I can remember honestly grappling with like, how much longer am I going to have with my mom? Like, I don't know. Cancer is a scary word. It's a scary word. And again, I'm grateful she's doing good. This is six years ago now, and she's She's still not healed. We're still praying for that. So if you think of her, pray for healing. But outside of that, she's doing amazing. She's living with gratitude. She is reading stories to her grandkids on a regular basis and all of that, which is great. But I had to grapple with this. Like, how much longer am I going to have with my mom? You know, I was 27 years at the, at the time, and all of us siblings are processing through this, and nobody really knows what to expect, what's going to happen. And I, we all processed through it in different ways, and we all, we all came to good places. None of my siblings are, you know, caught up in bitterness or anything, which I'm grateful for. But for me, I had to get to thankfulness. And I had to recognize, hey, I, I want this circumstance to be different. But if all I have with my mom is the 27 years that I've so far had, I actually have so much to be grateful for. Because I wouldn't trade those 27 years with my mom for a thousand with any other mom, right? Like, I, I really appreciate everything my mom is and who she is, and I wouldn't trade 27 years with her for anyone else. I really wouldn't. And I'm aware that there's, there's people, probably some people in this room, and you're like, man, I wish I had a month with a mom. That really meant something. And so I had to get to thankfulness. And of, of course, you're grappling with this and you want, you know, another hundred years to live and to enjoy relationship with my mom. But I really got to the place where I said, hey, if this is all I have, I actually still have so much to be grateful for. 
and I wouldn't trade it for anything. And I think that's what we have to do in situations that feel hard. We have to fight our way and get to gratitude. And when we do, we experience peace. Again, we don't have to be thankful for the circumstance. I'm not thankful for cancer. And I pray on a regular basis that it leaves my mom's body and leaves her perfectly healed and whole. But I can be thankful regardless, in spite of the circumstance. I can be thankful. And that's how we get to peace. We have to figure out a way in every circumstance to be thankful, to focus up. And so how do we do that? If focusing up is this practice where we get transformation and peace, and by the way, a lot of other things that I didn't have time to talk about today, how do we practically focus up in our lives? And I believe that gratitude really is two things. I think it is a heart posture where we have this feeling of gratitude and thankfulness. But then I also believe that it is a practiced habit. We can grow in thankfulness. We can grow in gratitude. And so if it's both our heart and our mind, you know, the first verse that we looked at, Paul talks about setting our hearts and our minds on things above. And so sometimes gratitude is a feeling inside of us, and it's like we hardly can contain it. It's just easy. It bubbles up. We're just grateful for almost without any sort of reason. And then there's other times when we don't feel grateful at all but we can still choose to focus up with our minds. And we can choose, I'm going to find something to be thankful for, even though I don't feel it. And in some ways, I think that's more powerful because we're not relying on our emotions, on what we feel, but we are saying we choose this despite all of the circumstances. And these things, I think they do really grow in tandem. We can grow our ability to focus up when we don't feel it. And as we do that, we're going to end up feeling it more. We're actually going to feel more grateful naturally, and then we kind of just play off of each other, and our hearts and our minds are growing in this together. So as we, we, we grow in both, um, but it's easier to practice fixing our minds on things above. So for the rest of our time together, we're going to kind of talk about a few very practical ways that I think all of us can grow in this, and then we're actually going to practice it live a little bit here. So I'm going to, I'm going to activate us a little bit more than maybe you're used to. And I want you to kind of be aware, if I can put it this way, of like the atmosphere of the room. I don't know if that sounds super like mystical to you. I'm not trying to be hyper-spiritual. But I do believe that thankfulness impacts the spiritual reality. And so I think more hope and peace and joy gets released when we are actively thankful. And so if, if I can just encourage you, as we're stepping into this, kind of notice if things feel different. Maybe you'll feel a little bit more hopeful or joyful. And so I have three ways for us to focus up practically. And you can adapt these, you can change them, you can steal them all of these things. But these, this is just to kind of get our minds going. How can we actually do this? How can we create habits of thankfulness? So the first one is to do's into thank yous. To do's to thank yous. How many of you like to do lists? Yes. Okay. Yep. How many of you have like multiple to do lists and they're color coded and they're organized by priority and date? And yeah, okay. So more people like me. This is how my brain works. I like to-do lists, and I have multiple lists, and they're kind of organized by, by you know, priority and different things like this. But I, I check this to-do list sometimes, you know, it depends on the day, but sometimes five or ten times a day, and I'm just like making sure that I'm on track. Okay, is there anything that I'm forgetting about? And if I have half an hour somewhere, I'm like, okay, what, what can I do that feels helpful and useful, and like, how do I optimize my time, if I can put it that way. But then, part of the problem with being hyper aware of all the things that I, you know, quote unquote, have to do, is that you can start to feel stressed about it and overwhelmed and anxious. How many of you have gotten overwhelmed by your own to-do list? Right? 
And then, like, I've been there so many times. But doesn't it feel a little bit silly? Because we chose the things that go on there. And then we get stressed out by the things that we said yes to. And then we complain to other people about the to-do list that we made for ourselves. And I've been here many times. But it's, it's like, kind of ridiculous that we stress ourselves out by, by our own to-do lists. And we think, you know, oh, that thing has been on there way too long. I need to get that done. And, you know, this thing is kind of overwhelming me, and I don't even really know how to do that. And I haven't found a YouTube video yet that's going to help me. And, but what if we took a moment and we decided to find the thankfulness in each of those things? And I actually, on one of the one of the lists on my phone, I actually wrote out a reminder to myself. I did this years ago, but it's still there at the top of my to-do list on my phone. And this is what it says. So this is my reminder to myself. It says, hey, refuse stress. Every single one of these items represents a ridiculous blessing. Dwell in thankfulness. And I, I'm, not, I'm definitely not perfect about this, but this is a good reminder for me because whether you like it, or whether you're aware of it or not, whether you agree with me or not, almost every single one of your to-dos represents a crazy blessing. And we can be thankful for that. And so if you don't believe me yet, let me give you some examples. We, uh, we recently moved, and so... A lot of my to-do list right now is the little things around the house that need like fixing up or unpacking or organizing. And if you've moved, you know what I'm talking about. It's like all the big things are done, but now there's like a million tiny little things that need adjusting. And it can get easy to be like, oh, there's just so much and I feel overwhelmed and it all needs to be done at the same time. But if I take a step back and think about it, wow, God, thank you so much for this house. Like, that is crazy. Thank you so much for allowing us to purchase this house. Thank you so much for the family that's going to grow into this house and make it a home. And thank you so much for providing for us. And like, that will change your approach to your to-do list. I'm seriously, I'm so grateful. So, so grateful. Or maybe, you know, there's, there's some work on the car that needs to get done. And for me, when there's work on the car that needs to get done, it just means I need to book a mechanic appointment. I realize some of you, like, take it into your garage and actually work on it. I'm not that handy with cars. But, but that, even that, for me, can sometimes feel annoying because I'm like, oh, I still have to do that thing, and I still haven't done it, and I need to book that appointment. But wow, God, thank you that I have a vehicle. Not everybody has a vehicle. And I'm really grateful that I have a vehicle. I can get around so easily. And thank you that it's lasted us as long as it has. And thank you that it, it works well. And you see how this works? It really easily, you can turn it into gratitude. And for me, honestly, this, this past week, one of my to-dos was prepare to preach on Sunday. And that can feel overwhelming because I'm like, okay, I have to get up in front of, you know, whatever, 100 or 150 people and talk for a while. And hopefully it's good, right? Hopefully it's good. And that can feel overwhelming. That can feel stressful. But if I take a step back and I say, I'm so grateful for this church, and I really am. I really am grateful for this church. And I'm so grateful that I get to be in the position that I'm in. And it's, it's really like dreams and prayers coming true every time that I get to speak, every time I get to be involved in this church. I'm so grateful for that. And I'm grateful that I don't need to prepare a message by myself. God's really good at helping me. And so if you don't like this message, blame God partially. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Um, but it's like I, I get to work with God to prepare this message, and I'm really grateful for that. It's not totally up to me. I, I have to, you know, I have to work at it too. I have to put in the time and all of that stuff, but God is so faithful, and I can really be grateful that that's one of the things on my to-do list. And so I want us to practice this, and so if, if you're comfortable, if you're kind of new to our church or like something about this feels weird, we're not going to force you into anything. You can just raise your hand and say, I'm not really comfortable with that. We'll have grace. That's fine. But if you are, I actually want you to 
turn to the person next to you and take turns sharing one thing on your to-do list. Whether it's, whether it's a physical list or it's just something you know you have to get done. This is something that's been on my mind. Maybe it's been lingering for a while and it's stressing you out. And then I want you to practically thank God for it. For whatever it is behind that. Does that make sense? So just right now, we're going to take maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds or 60 seconds. And I want you to share one thing that's on that to-do list, whether it's mental or physical, and turn it into thankfulness. Turn it into gratitude. And go. But that's like a really simple way to be grateful, to be thankful. Okay, the next one. This is another practical way that we can focus up and be grateful. And this one is called the thank you can. The thank you can. Uh, and this is something that I take zero credit for. This is something that my parents implemented. And honestly, as kids, I think we complained about it. Uh, but in retrospect, I'm like, this is so awesome. And my wife and I, we've talked about it. We're going to do something similar. I'm not sure if it'll look exactly the same. But this is such a good, good, like, family tradition that my parents parents kind of forced us into. But it's so great. So this is how it works. You take a, a physical can or a canister, use, you know, a peanut butter jar or a tin or something like that. We had this little, like, tin can. And you just put it somewhere in your house that everybody knows where it is. You know, if you live by yourself, just put it somewhere that you won't forget it. Um, and then throughout the year, anytime something happens that you want to remember and be grateful for, you just write it down and you put it in the thank you can. And so for us growing up, you know, it was like we had a hockey game and I really wanted to score a goal. And so I'd pray, hey, God, can you help me score a goal? And then I'd score a goal. And then, you know, on the way home, my mom would be like, write it down, put it in the thank you can. I'd be like, oh, okay, I guess, fine. Or, you know, we, um, there's a, a test coming up in school for one of my siblings and they're stressed about it. And so they pray about it and they get a good grade. Okay, awesome. Write it down and put it in the thank you can. Or we're on a family road trip and we, we go through some crummy weather and we're like, okay, let's all just pray together. We get through this okay and everything's fine. And then, yeah, okay, we, we made it through. We made it to our destination. Somebody's going to write it down and put it in the thank you can. And then on Thanksgiving Day, after you're, you know, you've finished eating all your turkey and ham and mashed potatoes, we just passed out this tin and everybody takes one out and reads it out. And it gives everyone this opportunity to remember the goodness of God and be grateful. And it is such a genius thing. And like I said, I take no, no credit for this whatsoever. But it is intentionally for yourself and for your kids and for everyone, it's intentionally remembering the goodness of God in your life and being grateful for it. And it's really easy to forget, right? Because we have amazing things that God does for us on a regular basis, and it's really easy to forget those things. You know, if, you, if you're familiar with the story of the nation of Israel coming out of Egypt and coming into the promised land, there is like this almost comedic cycle where they would complain about something, God would come through with a miracle, and then like two verses later, they're complaining again. And then God comes through with another miracle, and then they start complaining. But we can do the same thing, right? It's easy to forget the miracles that God has done in our lives. And so this is one way of just intentionally remembering those miracles and those breakthroughs. And oh yeah, God, God did that. And, and it also builds faith for the next time. The next time we have a test that we're stressed out about, or the next time we drive through some, some bad weather, we remember, oh, remember God came through for us last time. He's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. And so that's one way. That's another way to just practically focus up and remember the goodness of God. Write down those things and somehow have a, a regular time when you pull them out and read them. And like I said, for us, it makes sense on Thanksgiving Day. It's a great little family tradition. Adapt it, change it, make it work for your family. But I encourage you to have something 
that helps you remember what God has done, especially over the past year. But we had some of those things and they would like linger from year to year. We'd like pull some of them out and like, you know, we don't need to remember that one anymore, I guess, <laughs> but it, it gets full, right? But there's some that we kept in there for years and years and years because, oh man, we don't want to forget how good God has been. So that's another way, the thank you can. The third way is the gratitude game, the gratitude game. So this is, this is something um, my incredible wife and I, we do this from time to time. We don't have like a consistent time. We, it's not like every week for a half hour we're going to do it or every month or anything. But we try to do it, especially when we're driving somewhere for, you know, more than half an hour or something like that. We have a bit of time. And it's really simple. One person starts, and you just say, I'm thankful for this. And then the other person goes, I'm thankful for this. And you just go back and forth. And it's amazing how much better you can feel after that. You just, like, feel hopeful and joyful. And, yeah, there's a lot of good things around. And the rules to this game are that it doesn't have to be really dramatic. It can be dramatic. That's fine. But it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be big, massive things that you're thankful for. When we do it, it's, it's often like, oh, I'm just thankful for the fall colors. I'm thankful for the smell of coffee. I'm thankful that we have heat in our house when it gets cold. You know, it's like, it can be really big things. It can be really small things. But it's just the act of being thankful. And so let's practice this again. Well, uh, find, find a neighbor. If you started with one, you can, you can change to another neighbor. I give you permission. But just take a few moments and one person start and just say, I'm thankful for, like I said, doesn't have to be a big dramatic thing. I'm thankful for rain. I'm thankful for a blue sky. I'm thankful that we have access to the Bible in our language. Like it can be massive. It can be simple. It can be small. But let's just go back and forth for a few, few minutes Maybe see if we can get up to like five each, if you have time to share that many. And let's just be grateful for the things going on in our life. Good? We'll take about 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds, and just be grateful with the person next to you. How are we doing? Guys had a chance to share? Who got up to five each? Yes. All right. Gold stars for all of you. This is, this is just a practical way to focus up, to be thankful, to be grateful. And, and like I said, as we work at this more, you know, it takes a little bit of effort. It's almost like a muscle. We have to work at it. But you'll feel it more. The more you do it and kind of just force yourself, I'm going to choose to be thankful, the more that you'll just feel grateful naturally. And like I said, thankfulness is so powerful. It brings transformation to our lives. It brings peace to our lives. I believe also, I, I didn't have a ton of time to dig into this, but I believe there's a biblical principle that if you thank God before the breakthrough, that, that can actually bring the miracle into your life. There's this biblical principle where, you know, Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus, right before he calls out Lazarus and performs this crazy miracle, what does he do? He literally looks up, which I think is funny. He literally looks up and he thanks God. He thanks God. And so I want to encourage you, thankfulness is powerful. It's not, not this boring little thing that we sometimes do once a year. It's powerful. It'll bring transformation to your life. It'll bring peace to your life. And if you are staring at a circumstance that feels like it's not moving, I encourage you to get thankful to be thankful, to look up and say, God, there's like for Jesus, literally, there's a smelly tomb right in front of me, but I'm going to choose to be grateful. I'm going to choose to be grateful before the miracle comes, before the breakthrough happens. And as I close this morning, I just want to remind all of us, there's, there's always a reason to focus up, to be thankful. And we can grow in this, this heart posture and this practice of being grateful, of being thankful. And I believe that as we do, this church, it's going to experience more peace and more transformation in our lives. We're going to look more like Jesus. And I hope 
I hope each and every one of us want that. And then we're going to, I really do believe, we're going to experience more breakthrough and more miracles and more circumstances will shift as we choose to be grateful even before anything has, has happened. The worship team's starting up, as you can tell, which is great. Um, and we're going to worship with one more song in a minute here. But I always want to give the opportunity. Uh, actually, why don't we stand up? We can, like, stretch our legs as I'm doing this. Thanksgiving stretch. I always want to give an opportunity for anyone, if you're in the room or if you're watching online, to start a relationship with Jesus. Or for you, maybe it's, it's something where you had a relationship many years ago, but you know that you don't really have a real relationship with God today. And I just want to extend the opportunity. This is a great day to do it. It's always a great day to do it. And so this is for you if you have never done this before or it's just been a really long time. I'm going to count to three. I want you to lift up your hand if that is you and you say, I want a relationship with Jesus and I don't really have one right now. And then if there's someone in the room, we'd love to pray kind of together as a congregation with you. And we'd also love to chat with you after. I encourage you to come up and we can, we, I'd love to ha have a conversation with you, chat about it, pray with you. But if there's anyone in the room or online, um, obviously I can't see hands online, but we'll believe with you. On the count of three, I just encourage you to raise up your hands. So one, two, three. Is there anyone in the room? Let's say they want that and don't have it. Awesome. Well, let's just pray all together then. Um, Jesus, we just thank you for Thanksgiving. We thank you for this holiday that we get to hang out with family and eat food and play football. And we're reminded to be thankful. God, I thank you that we live in a country that has Thanksgiving Day. It's such a practical reminder to do something you taught us to do. And God, I thank you for this church. I thank you for where we've been and where we're going and where you're taking us. I thank you for the people in this room and also the people that are off hanging out with family. We bless them. And God, would you teach us to be thankful in everything? I pray that each and every one of us would kind of get a, a Holy Spirit level up in our ability to focus up, no matter the circumstance. We would be able to focus up. We would be able to find the thing to be thankful for. God, we want to live grateful lives. We want to be grateful children for all the gifts you've poured out in our lives. Yeah, and God, would you just bless us as we pray together and then as we go out after that. God, let us be connected to you. Amen.